Hello, and thank you for joining us today on whatever day or time you are joining us in worship. I'm glad you've chosen to spend, you know, a little bit of time with us. Our videos tend to be about 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes we get real low down to 10, um, and we haven't had too many more over 20 minutes. It's, you know, been trying to keep it short, just, you know, strict, uh, strict to the message, that type of thing. Um, for anybody who has done public speaking or preaching, you know, time restraint is one of the hardest things to work on. And that's where, <laughs> that's where I've lived the last, you know, almost two years at this point with the pandemic, trying to keep everything in order. Uh, announcement wise, uh, one that I have is to remind you of our giving options, which of course I'll put a slide up for that. Um, but your giving goes to support the ministries of this church and of the various things we do. Things are beginning to start back up. We've got small groups starting to meet again, and some of our other ministries have never stopped even, like our food pantry and so on. So your donations are appreciated and uh, will go to help us a lot. Also, I want to let you know we're going to do a sermon series coming up in October. I know it's a bit of ways off, but we're going to do the three simple rules by Reuben P. Job. It's an excellent little book. So if you're someone uh, watching at home and, and you only interact with us through the online medium, you, you'll want to know that. You can order that book. Um, and more information will be coming out from that about that, like the dates and stuff as we get closer. We're not close enough for that type of thing. But if you're someone who watches the video but you're local, you can contact our office and have your name put on a list so that we can order a book for you. Um, the cost is it's under $10 for one of those books. So that's everything that I have. And again, it's a joy to be with you this day. I'd like to invite you to bow your heads in prayer with me. Holy One, you have called us to this place, a place where we find your spirit. We have gathered here to pray and to be forgiven to love and be loved, and to hear the word boldly proclaimed as we ap apply it to our lives. Open our hearts to the mystery of your word. Remind us that your word is proclaimed in the life of Jesus the Christ. Help us believe in you and in your love for us. In the holy name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today is a weird one. It has a lot of different little verses. So I'm going to read it out to you. Um, the parts that are being skipped over are just some more of the detailed parts. It's not that they're unimportant, but they kind of make it difficult to continue in the story. So if you want to do the longer version, just go ahead and read 1 King chapter 8. But for what I'm focusing on for the message, it's chapter 8. Verses 1, 6, 10 through 11, 22 through 30, and 41 through 43. Uh, I know, again, a weird breakup, and NRSV does that sometimes. Um, uh, that's why I'll, I'll just encourage you to read it uh, in your own time, especially since if we were to read the whole chapter, that's a lot. <laughs> so listen for the voice of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant out of, of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembled of Israel and spread out his hands to the heavens. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you, you promise with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, 
Keep for your servant my father David that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail your, a, a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house which I have built. Regardless, your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heed the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there. May you, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays towards this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, hear in heaven your dwelling place, heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. Here ends the reading of God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Years ago, when I was in seminary, I went on a cross-cultural trip, and I've talked about this trip off and on over the years, um, but by way of rehashing, uh, we were in Turkey for two weeks, and then we were in Lebanon, particularly Beirut, for another week before flying home. This particular experience happened in the third week. Uh, that week, I, we had what I would call a crazy bus driver. He kept telling, telling jokes, and of course, I couldn't hear what he was saying. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I, I have hearing loss, and sometimes when someone have a, has an accent, it's even worse. I, it's just so hard for me to understand. And he would say these jokes. I couldn't hear him. He'd start laughing, and he, he was swerving in and out of traffic like crazy at the same time. It was... <laughs> Hilariously terrifying is the phrase I would use for it. Uh, I wasn't in charge of the itinerary at that time, of course, and um, I don't know how we did our next event, but at a certain point it was decided that we would stop and walk out on the beach next to the Mediterranean. I, I remember getting out and walking to the water line and putting my hand in the water. This is a moment that, that it's, it just captured in my mind because I had spent so many years reading about that particular body of water, uh, the history of empires rising and falling, the story of Odysseus and, and his travel back home, all happened on the Mediterranean. And when I knelt down and put my hand in the water and ran my fingers through the sand, the experience crystallized for me as a, as a real place. There's a certain meal I make for my family, something that only my family makes that I'm aware of. It's one of my daughter's favorite meals, and basically it involves chicken, cheese, vinegar, and onions. I make it every few months, and without fail, I begin to cook the meal. And as I smell it cooking, I have memories of being in my childhood home and my mother making the meal. No, not anything earth shattering or, or anything like that, but small memories that, that are glimpses into the past. Uh, like many of you, I could tell the story of different hymns that we sing. Uh, there's a particular time and place or a person or a worship experience that, that the song might touch. The song, Here I Am, Lord, I know for some people this is uh, a campground song that they remember singing around the fire. But for me, I had sung it in church many times by this one particular event. But it will always be tied in my mind to the baccalaureate service that I attended right before my high school graduation. 
so many of our experiences are tied to a particular place, time, or event. Uh, our scripture passage today is one that uh, I'm going to bypass some of the problems in the text. And, and the reason is I have been tackling the hard problems again and again over the last few weeks. Uh, and there really is some problems here, problems of the marriage of government and religion together and, and all sorts of things like that. However, I think there are a few parts of this passage that speak to something that we need to pay attention to, given our church experience today. For better or for worse, when Solomon builds the temple, it ties God to a particular time and place. And we see in the prayer that Solomon offers up with him uh, begging God, who he knows can't inhabit a building. He, he's beyond containment. But, but Solomon prays and begs God to inhabit the temple. Solomon calls upon God to remember God's promises. And of course, he being Solomon, reminds the people to remember their promises. And perhaps even more noticeable, he asks God to remember the foreigner. Right? He asks God to, to pay, pay special attention to those outside of Israel and their prayers. In the past year and a half now, almost two years of the pandemic, I've tried often to teach and remind you that God does not reside in the church building that we have. That to be the church, we need to be the church where we are, wherever we are at. But there is an element of sacredness that we have to remember when we talk about a building or a place. Uh, the, those events in our lives where special things happen, they tie us to an experience. There's a sacredness to that experience. And as a church, we have to ask ourselves, are we helping people experience God in this place? And when I say in this place, I mean on our campus. Uh, there are so many things that we go into about experiencing God. And it, it, it's, it's not enough to say when we show up to church that we are worshiping. Uh, it's not enough to say that because if we don't show genuine hospitality, we don't, if we don't show concern for where people are at in their lives and what they're going through, if we don't live the gospel that we say we believe in, all of these will cancel out any worship activity. What are we creating when we come together? Are we engaged in a dialogue with one another seeking to create a worshipful experience, an experience of God. Perhaps there's another more important part of this, and that is realizing that God and experiencing God is beyond our four walls. You know, Solomon called on God to remember the foreigner, and, and it's important for us to remember this, uh, not just because, you know, we have to we have to pay attention to people who are outside, but because not everybody's experience of God occurs in a designated worship place. They have experience of God that can't be contained by the four walls. And, and, and too often the church just dismisses these as inappropriate. Um, and we don't listen to those experiences and, and we don't see how God is at work. We don't seek to, to connect those experiences that people might have into our worship life at the church. Those experiences I listed at the beginning of our message, I imagine are not that uncommon. You know, you may not have stories of being on the Mediterranean, but maybe you store, stood on the shore of the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean and took in the majesty and grandeur of God's creation. Or perhaps you have stood upon the edge of the Grand Canyon and marveled about how such a thing came to be. Or, or maybe you sat on your porch and watched the hummingbirds come and feed and be astounded how they seem to just float from place to place. Our worship is so much more than a church building. Yet we are to remember that this is an experience of God and we are privileged to have that experience and to share that experience and to encourage that experience with others. 
Let's share it together. This week, stay happy, healthy, and safe. Amen.